so as the object uh, gets closer to the center line we would expect to um, basically see some extra material beyond these visible lines uh, that we just drew so on each side of the object so we need to add that here oh uh, before I do uh, notice where the center line runs okay the object the cylinder is at its full width until it reaches this vertical line okay uh, this vertical line coincides with uh, uh, this face here okay so at this point here uh, the the object is not full depth um, uh, it goes back to this face it goes from a curved face here to a flat face here and kind of jogs in so um, so with that in mind let's uh, draw here uh, before we do that um, since we're focusing on this point let me draw a line straight up and on the visible layer um, I will draw a line here up to this intersection point and over to here and for some reason I can't see the lines I just drew. So usually what that means um, is I need to change the draw order. So I'm going to select um, just single click. <clears throat> you have to be careful about how you select these. Um, I'm going to change the draw order of just the construction lines and I'm going to send them to the back. So I'm going to select those, right click, draw order, send to back. Okay, now I can see my lines. Okay, so um, I'll do the same thing on this side. I oh, can't see that line now. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Single click on the construction line, draw order, send it back. So now I can see it. So here the object is full width. Okay, so then it jogs in. Now before we go any further, just a little geometry for you. Uh, this is a, called a conic section. When you cut a cylinder with an angled plane, um, it creates different shapes. In this case, um, we're given, uh, we're creating an ellipse. Okay, um, so we know some things about the ellipse. We know where the center point of the ellipse because we know where the center point of the cylinder is, or that because of this axis. Okay, we know where the end point of the ellipse uh, is um, because of this intersection point. Okay, so let's um, let's project a couple of uh, construction lines up. Okay, now uh, I don't normally trim uh, construction lines, but I'm going to in this case because every line has a midpoint, and if I trim uh, uh, trim the excess, let me just go ahead and show you. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Uh, if I trim the excess, TR enter enter, then this midpoint will be midpoint of this line will be in the midpoint of this object, which is what I want to use. So I want to switch to my visible layer, create an, an ellipse, E L L I P S E. Uh, I want to select this endpoint as <coughs> the one above the the uh, center point of my ellipse. I want this intersection to be. Uh, one endpoint axis, and this one would be the other uh, axis endpoint, and then use this midpoint here of this line <coughs> as the endpoint of my ellipse. Okay, uh, we're going to trim this ellipse a little more, but just to clean this up, <coughs> I'm going to just trim half of it right now. Okay, so we need to project up these lines uh, from the right side view to the top view. So let me go to my construction layer. <clears throat> now we'll draw construction lines up from the endpoints. And then draw them across. <clears throat> Now obviously because there's visible lines between these two lines in the right side view, <coughs> there will be in the top view as well. So let me go to my visible layer and I will draw um, lines in between here and here. And you can see that it uh, intersects my, my ellipse at that intersection point as well, which it should. <coughs> Same thing here. 
Okay. Now, we can trim the ellipse a little more now, as I mentioned, TR, Enter, select that line, and then we'll trim it beyond those edges. You actually have a visible line from here to here and from here to here. Now, where does it, <clears throat> why is that there? Where does that come from? Well, hopefully this will transfer properly. That length is 0 0.1623, and it's because of the distance of this arc, the linear distance of this arc. Um, so if I go per perpendicular distance between these lines here is also 0.1623. Okay, so that's where that come from, comes from. Now we can tell that uh, <clears throat> this is kind of the, the shape we're expecting from this angled surface. It's just going to be skewed because we're viewing it from a different direction, but the plane is still there. Uh, so from from this point these lines will extend to the end of the object and then back to here okay and that's the same thing it did here it went down from these these lines uh, and then cha cha went 90 degrees until it reached the end of the object so it went here went 90 degrees until it reached the end of the object and I accidentally missed my intersection point there you have to be careful about that okay so let me turn off my construction layer Okay, so that's what the um, <clears throat> top view looks like, except for the hole. Okay, we have to account for the hole. Um, and what we can do <clears throat> is let's just copy what we've already drawn. We'll copy that, enter, and then uh, should be able to. Um, I'm not actually sure if um, if that hole is located on the midpoint of that line or not. That's 1.38. And let's just measure. No, it's not quite located on the midpoint there. So, um, what we want to do is um, I'm going to just draw a temporary line. And the reason I'm doing this is because of the way the center line is constructed. Now I'm going to copy all this, and from the end point of this line, I'm going to snap to the midpoint of this line. And then I will let me get rid of that little temporary line that I drew. I did that so I'd have an endpoint to snap to. Okay, so now I have properly located <coughs> the hole in the top view and didn't have to do any extra work. Okay, so let's go to our layout tab and finish that up. Let's find a scale that works. Let's try 1 to 2. It looks a little small since we're not adding dimensions. Let's try 1 to 1. Well, that, <coughs> that probably looks okay. Let me center it up. We're not drawing an isometric view for this exercise, so. Let me um, kind of move that over, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this right side view, but I'm going to go to model space to do it. So um, just in case you don't know this, um, you can move a right side view left and right, but you can't move it any other direction. I can only move it left and right, di directly left and right. Okay, if you deviate at all from left to right, you have misplaced the view. Okay, the top view, I can move up and down. Okay, and the reason why is because of how the points project from view to view okay so this is just a, a final touch that we're going to do to to get this on our paper <clears throat> everything looks good I'm a lot my viewport so I can't accidentally move anything um, <clears throat> our line type looks a little large I'm going to just draw a line in paper space and I'm going to just kind of draw it along one of these full length dashes on the the hidden line here click on it go to properties the length is 0.25 which is about twice as long as it should be so let's type in LTS for line type scale and then enter. And my current line type scale is 1. Let's change it to 0.5 so the line types display half the length of what they are now. And as you can tell, the, um, the length of the little dashes on the hidden line will be displaying at approximately eighth of an inch like they should be. Okay, so that's what the um, completed exercise looks like. Don't forget to fill out your, your title block. Uh, in, in any information that you know and as I said earlier there's no isometric view required for this exercise and that concludes th this video.